What is up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Happy new release day, guys. 2023 Topps Chrome Platinum Anniversary just sold out. Spaceball 12 box case break PYT number one. And here we go, guys. So thank you guys for everybody that bought in. Joe sold out the break by getting the Mets. Everybody else bought in earlier today or yesterday or whenever we sold pre-orders for this. And there you go. Boom. Always love to come in early on release days, especially like Wednesdays. If we uh, get breaks done, which we did. I appreciate it, guys. And again, obviously, guys, these boxes aren't super expensive. You only get one on-card auto, which I think is great. Um, you know, and obviously... I'm going with the classic 54 design. Which if you like the old school baseball, you're going to love the design. So what we'll do is probably rip six boxes at a time and then go with the six and then we'll rip the next six. Like I said, if you guys like this, guys, number two is also on the website, down to five left. Still think we can also do that today. Uh, or actually, not today, but in general, but right now, before Joe gets here. Oh, what are these? Is that like a kind of pearl pack? What are we looking for in that pack, huh? One pro model, classic design. Interesting. Oh, the City Variation Packs. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Is that what it is? Crazy. I have no idea what it is, but obviously we're going to open it. I was just wondering. So we'll open it after these six and we'll leave it up there. Is it one in every ten cases or ten boxes? It's crazy. You like this 54 design, Mike? Like what? You like the 54 design? I love the 54 design. A lot of rookies. Hank Aaron, Ernie yeah. Banks. Ted Williams has, has two cards in 54. Oh, nice. It wasn't in 52 or 52. Yeah, it looks nice. You've seen one in every case, so maybe one in maybe one per case, but one in every ten boxes probably. That's what it was, but yeah, no, I mean that's that's cool. One in ten cases would have been wild, but one in every ten boxes should be cool. Wow, it says one in every ten cases. Wow. Well, they definitely screwed that up.
What's up, Brian? How you doing, buddy? Congrats to your Mavericks, man. I actually was kind of sad because I missed most of the game on Saturday. I just got to watch the fourth, but I would have loved to have seen a go seven games, man. That series was fun. All I know is that everybody got to see how great SGA really is. You know, it kind of reminds me of the Thunder team in the 2010s when they had to go through Dirk like two years in a row. And I remember Dirk beat us one year when they went to the finals. And then the Thunder beat them to go to the finals. So maybe seeing OKC Dallas again for the next few years. It was cool, tiring to be honest. All the setting up and cleaning up. But it was cool. It was cool. Whoa. Don't fall, sir. Don't fall. Forget that Platinum Anniversary is very, very slippery. Yeah, no, I know, yeah. Thunder. Thunder are going to be good for the next probably four or five years at least. They got most of their core locked up for at least like three or four years. But they built the Thunder just like they built those early Thunder years with Durant, Westbrook, Harden, Ibaka. So they'll be back. And I think they're actually ahead of schedule too actually. What a crazy two-year turnaround, right? From being pretty much one of the worst teams in the league to last year being a play-in team, this year winning the West, which is wild. And even though they lost in the second round, obviously could have won that series too. So I think they're well ahead of schedule. No, no, for sure. And then the West is not like the East. If the Thunder were like in the East, I, I think they would have made it much farther if that was the case. The West is just too loaded. Also, too, I mean, granted, obviously the East is kind of banged up, too. Giannis was injured. You know. Jimmy Buckets got injured in the playoffs. It just looked like to me, though, that Denver Game 7, they were winning, right? I mean, I didn't watch the first half, but weren't they up by, like, 20? Seems like to me they just got super tired and just died off. I love me some Ant-Man. And I'll be rooting for the Timberwolves for that reason, but I'll be pulling for the Mavs to win more than anything. If I had to choose, I like Luka way more. Love, always love Kyrie. Just can't stand Carl Anthony Towns. Just can't. So, for that reason, if Carl Anthony Towns wins on the T Wolves, maybe I'd root for them a little bit more. But I can't stand that dude. <laughs> so. Sheesh, that's awesome, man. Congrats. Yeah, hopefully you guys had fun with Michael on Saturday. He was doing me the favor of covering me when I covered him last month. But yeah, man, I, I heard. He told me he pulled like some no, lower levels on Saturday. Did that throwback mixer. He told me that throwback mixer was fun, but it was kind of rough because some boxes, every card was stuck. So, I was like, oof, sorry, buddy. That's right, the most Piston days. I'm sure Pistons will miss, that, will miss those days right now.
Yeah, that's good. But yeah, guys, speaking of hockey, though, I mean, you guys know me. I love me some hockey. Uh, that hockey filler sold out, so if we can sell out just those four straight-up spots, I can break that hockey mixer right now. So, all we need to do is sell out those four spots. I mean, it's breaking today no matter what, but since I came in a little earlier, you know, I, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind breaking that for you guys. Oh, yeah. Well, Cave is solid when healthy, for sure. I just don't know, man. I, I just kind of, like, I, I, I bag on the Pistons because every year they, they have, like, a top three, top four pick, number one pick, and it just, they pick great players, but it just, they don't work out together. Like, it's just embarrassing. It's very embarrassing. Detroit should be what the Thunder are right now. You know, drafting lottery picks for the last X amount of years and the players turning out to actually be somebody. Not, not to say that Thunder haven't drafted first round picks and they flopped because they definitely have, but it's like Detroit always gets these top five players and it just they still suck. I mean, you can call it coaching too, I guess, but it's the players out there playing, so it's embarrassing. I have no clue. Sam Presti has been with the Thunder since the Durant days for their GM, so he's the one that's building these teams for the Thunder. I have no clue about other people. But yeah, sucks to hear that, Mike, but it's true. <laughs> they should be a lot better than what they are. And I think they also got screwed. I don't even think they got the number one overall pick, right? Who did they give it to this year? Atlanta, I think. Or who did no, who did they give who did they give the number one pick to this year? I think the Thunder, though, are going to draft Zach Eddy. I think they need a big guy like that. That's who they're missing. They're just missing a little size. Assistant general manager. Well, they should have took Sam Presti. That's probably why he was an assistant. <laughs> they maybe thought that he was the guy putting all those pieces together. Y'all needed Sam Presti, not the assistant. All right, here we go, guys. We got a Teoscar Hernandez. Carlos Correa. And we got a Lou Gehrig. That's freaking awesome. For the Yankees. Where's the number right now? Right there. Four out of 50. And out of 100, Adrian Belcher for the Texas Rangers.
Zach Neto. And how about a little Barry Zito autograph to 99 for the Oakland A's? Who has Oakland? Oakland? Going to Kev. To Shara. To 199. Jeter Downs Refractor. We got a Mason Miller to 150. And I bought a little Babe Ruth to four ninety nine. Awesome. Michael Kolpak to four ninety nine. And a little Julio Rodriguez. Sweet. I think the image variation city ones people are saying is gonna be in this pack. Oh, yeah, I think they should be backwards then, probably. I mean, they have to be easier to spot. Plus, I'll have your guys' help here, so that's the good thing. And we got uh, Garcia to 75. Uh, and look at that, Corbin Carroll. Rookie autograph there for the Diamondbacks going to Jeff Walker. Josh Smith to four ninety nine. Von Grissom, and we got a Nick Ahmed. Jackie. And we got a Michael Massey to 100. Wagner Swagger Refractor. And a Taj Bradley to 199. Let's see what these refractors at least. That would be awesome, though, if they actually made them have a different scent or something. Something standing out in that sense. Be wild. Jared Walsh. Be like, ah, oh, smells like a variation. We have a Jesse Winker to 75. And we got a Willem Contreras to 50 gold. Todd Bradley for the Rays. Rays is a uh, neat. Volpe base. Michael Ciani. We got a Cody Bellinger. It's 100. Bobby Miller. Lenny and Sosa is 25. Trey Turner. Uh, 
box three. Wilson. Ben Attendi to one hundred. Jonathan Aranda. One ninety nine. Uh, it could have been the stack that I kind of dropped a little bit. Is why one of them was backwards, upside down. Sorry. Ooh, last spot mojo. A couple of these stacks kind of tilted down. Thirty out of ninety nine. Kodai Senga for the Mets. And last spot mojo strikes again. Nobody wanted the Mets. Riley Green to four ninety nine. Adley Rutschman to one fifty. Going to Joe and the Orioles. And you Darvish to one eighty nine. Sees Whitey Ford to four ninety nine. All right, two more boxes, and then we'll go to the second half. Tory Hunter. And Adrian Beltre to seventy five. For Texas, got an angel. Winkowski. And how about a Jose Canseco for the A's? Another one for Kev. Willie Mays to 50. Giants. It's going to Brian. Logan Allen to 100. And a Matt Mervis. The two ninety nine little color match there for the Cubbies. Whoa. So that is to one fifty, Stephen Kwan. What'd you say, Joe? So the regular iterations, I saw the cards were turned over as in the back was showing. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, they're turned around, right? Is that what you mean? I mean, I don't think variations are going to be super easy in the sense that they're going to be in every box, every potential case, right? Or at least maybe one per case. So it's not like we potentially missed any yet. Michael Kopech. Kike. And we got a Cole Reagans to 150 for the Texas Rangers. Angel. Frank Thomas. And Lenny and Sosa to 99. Try to get some sleeps.
Adoles Garcia to 50. And Randy Rosarena to 499. Well, let's go with that pack. John Carlos Stanton, Jacob DeGrom, and Volpe. Can these also be silvers and numbered cards too as well? Because if that's the case, that'd be pretty sweet. I'd assume so. Next one. Eugenics total T.
are actually uh, my schedule kind of changed, but not really. It just switched one day. So, um, my schedule usually was Fanatics Live Tuesday, Wednesday, and then here live on Wednesday mornings, like today, if there's releases, and then I do Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But we switched it up just a little bit. We kind of increased our IG hours for personal, so. Uh, I am on IG on, on Tuesdays now. I do here Wednesday mornings if there's releases before Joe. And then now um, on Thursdays, we kind of rotate it. So Joe was usually on Fanatics Live on Thursdays. I was here. Uh, we And then Michael was, was uh, with Joe. And now we switched it up where I'm going to be on Fanatics Live solo on Thursdays. Joe is here, and then Michael's on IG. And then I'm back to my normal Friday and Saturday. So I just, I basically just switched one YouTube day. So basically, Joe's here more on YouTube now, more than ever again. He used to split time between Fanatics Live and here. I kind of just rotated everywhere, because I kind of liked all the platforms. So basically, he's just on here Sundays and Thursdays now, when he wasn't on Sundays and Thursdays, he was on Fanatics Live, basically. So, I have two YouTube days, Friday and Saturday now. So, just Wednesday mornings if there's releases on YouTube, and then Friday, Saturday. Yeah, we kind of increased our Instagram hours, so we kind of rotated some, some days, some shifts. So the only thing that changed for me was that I was here on Thursdays, but now I'm not. We're still here Friday and Saturdays. Clearly it comes out Friday, right? Yeah, I'll have that on Fridays. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we'll see how that goes. Obviously, our schedule. It wasn't a set in stone. It was more like a... Let's see how, it, how the streams do rotating, per se. Because we used to do two people on Fanatics Live, like time of tag teaming, but I don't think it really made a difference whether we had two people or not. So I think that's why we kind of switched some things around where I think one person can just handle it like we do here on YouTube or Instagram. So they wanted me to be on Fanatics Live solo on Thursdays. And then Mike will be on IG and see how that goes. Yeah, guys, I haven't gotten a single order since I started this break here. So, if you guys want to break more Tops Chrome Platinum Anniversary, grab those teams. Five left in number two. Like I said, that hockey filler is coming up next. That was our last hockey filler per se, last one technically. So if we can sell those four straight up spots, we can break that hockey next. And that hockey is not really a long break at all, probably like 15, 20 minutes max. So we can still do that and also still do another platinum chrome anniversary if you guys really wanted to do it. So I, I really want to do that hockey mixer more than anything, guys. So let's try to sell that out. <laughs> you guys know I love some hockey, and I think I'd love to give away a McDavid to somebody that buys into that. 
So unless they change anything, it still should be up there. Those are the last uh, X amount of spots. Oh, actually, I did get orders. They all just came in right now. Marlins. Twins. And Braves. Actually, more for number three more than anything. So, yeah. Let's see what we can do, guys. I, I have time to do Platinum and the Hockey Mixer, guys, so... As long as you guys sell these breaks in a timely manner, I can definitely do them all. And then Joe will be here, and then he can do number three. He can focus on other breaks that you guys want to do. So let's, let's do it, guys. Let's keep it going. more on the lower inside Brian but again also to remember hockey is not as expensive as other products so even though some people would consider it lower end higher end boxes are like not that much more expensive you know like trilogy is like a hundred and sixty dollar box while some higher end products are only like three hundred you know four hundred there's only a few products that are actually over like five hundred dollars which there's really not that many so I mean it may be considered lower end, but it's not like it's, you know, big league baseball to like definitive, you know what I mean? Hunter Brown, but it's still a fun product. And obviously anything 23, 24 with Bedard is going to sell for hotcakes too. Edward Julian, 275. But it is considered a little bit on the lower end side. But like I said, it's not like it's that. Whoa, did we get two autographs in here? Hunter Brown and now James Alvin. Wow. Dodgers, David. That was wild. Brooks Robinson at 50. Max Muncy. Yeah, Trilogy is definitely a fan favorite. People do love that, though. Royce Lewis, orange. Nice to 25. It's our first orange we've seen. Minnesota Twins. And Caleb Killian. Uh, no, we don't. I don't think we do. If we do, Brian, it might be a few boxes as, like, personals, though. But I don't think enough to do a group break. If we have any, yeah. Uh... We actually sold a decent amount of Trilogy. We sold like at least four or five cases. Marcus Wilson. That's numbered to 75. That looks like a normal just refracted parallel. But it is numbered. Mark Vientos to 25. And how about a John Crook? Orange to 25. Phillies. Going to Sean. Lou Gehrig to 75. Steven Kwan to 50. Tommy Henry. 
And another orange, Jorge Soler, that's fifth, uh, 25. All right, a lot of oranges popping out of here, guys. Let's get a red or a super fractor. Noma. Hank Aaron to 199. Vladdy, I hear Vladdy's on the trade block, and so is Bo Bichette. But they're asking for a ridiculous amount of uh, uh, compensation back for them. And Yuri Perez for Miami. Or Brennan. Emmanuel Place. Cleveland. And we have a Johnny Damon when he was on the Royals to 50. Going to Rick. Joe Musgrove. Ozzy. You're a wizard. Taj Bradley to 199 for Tampa Bay. What a eight. That's our first uh, duplicate. Nick Vespi to 99. Kike. Prince Fielder. Luis Castillo. Bobsy. Beatty Refractor. Cedric Mullins. Jeets. All right, two more boxes, guys. Almost at the finish line. Tristan McKenzie. Ryan Kreider. To 150. Masataki Yoshida. Campanella. And Brandon Fat to 99. Bobby Doerr to 99. Michael Club, Paul Kernerko. Q. Brian Hayes. Yeah, Kyle Tucker to 50.
All right, last box here, guys. Good luck, everybody. I do see an orange, potentially. So maybe an orange autograph would be nice. We got a Ryan Kreidler. Nelson Velasquez. Wow, and that's our second dupe, Jose Canseco. Although we did get a bonus auto, but Jesse Winker to 25. There was two duplicate names in this, which will happen, guys. That well, sucks. I mean, if you're the owner of the duplicates, that's great. Out of 10, though, Braden Shoemake, that black border looks awesome. Nice one there for the Braves going to Justin Martin. Mike Jostramski. But obviously every case will be a little different. And Bryce Turing. All right, guys, and there you go. We'll do a quick recap of the autos, at least. So Hunter Brown, James Outman, John Crook, Orange, Yuri Perez, Taj Bradley, Refractor, Jose Canseco, uh, Taj Bradley, Base, Kodai Senga to 99 was really nice. Canseco Base again, Cole Reagans to 150. Here was those little uh, variation packs, City. We got a Corbin Carroll Base and Barry Zito. So there you go, guys. So we got... Uh, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Did I miss an auto? Or did I just put that to the side? I thought there was thirteen autos. Oh, here it is. Brennan Fat was the thirteenth auto. So there you go. Extra bonus auto in that one pack. So thirteen autographs there. Appreciate it, guys. Number two's in the store.